Hello, welcome. Uh, welcome to my talk. Um, thank you for attending right after the lunch break. First I thought it was, it was a good thing to be right after the lunch instead of before the lunch. Now I know, okay, it's raining and people want to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Including me. Uh, so, hi, I'm Dodo, uh, Agile coach at Kununu. I've been an Agile coach and a Scrum master for the last six years. Uh, before that, I've been a programmer in various industries. And during my years, I've experienced several teams that felt like this. You know, it's, it's like it was a team, people were working together, everything felt awesome. Y they were delivering constant value to each uh, to, to our users. Um, management knew they could rely on them. So if, if shit, can I say that? Shit hits the fan. <laughs> um, management can rely on them and everyone, everyone is excited um, about what, what's going on around the team. But over time, and the more and more you see from the team, it feels more like Groundhog Day. It's like the, <laughs> the team is in a constant cycle of refinement and delivery, refinement and delivery. I have seen so many teams where the sprint planning took 10 minutes because everything was refined, just take the top story points, they knew how many, they knew their velocity, forecasting was more or less perfect. Um, just take, take the things, uh, uh, take the story points, and, and we're, we're good to go. Um, and then the more, uh, the more time uh, goes by, you hear quotes like, I want to use technology X, Y, Z, but your project doesn't need a new technology. You hear a quote like, I want to take more responsibility, but the team is already self-managing, what, what can you give them more? Uh, what, what is there more? Um, how can we increase our velocity? Because that's kind of like the only thing in the, in the sprint retrospective and things like that where people think we can, we can do a lot of things. If we have twice the velocity, we're, we're done, right? Um, that's, that's a favorite of project managers. Um, the feedback that you get is, you did a great job, thank you. Okay, how can I improve? Tell me something, what I didn't do well. Um, and then, yeah, at one point you might hear, I quit. I found a new awesome job opportunity, a new awesome challenge. Um, and, and yeah, so just a quick, quick check. So um, who of you knows these teams that get mundane over time where they are generally considered well-performing? So I see, see some hands for all the others, poor you. <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> to be in such a team. Um, they are in a hamster wheel. they are things, you know, they are running and you know, they are also delivering value. So the hamster wheel is connected to a generator and you produce some, some energy, but it's nothing really moving. And, and uh, yeah, so this is why I'm here now. Um, over the last six years, mainly as, as a uh, Scrum Master and Natural Coach, I've worked with such teams who, um, who try to get out of this, this state because it's not nice. Because it's, it, if every day, every week, every sprint feels the same, it's, it's bad. And um, we played around with a lot of different things and this is what I want to give you today. It's nothing like, like I, I won't present you a guideline or a new framework or something, but um, I, I think, yeah, I'm losing my microphone. Sorry for that. Um, I want to give you a toolbox as a stretch. I want to inspire you. I want to show you what I did with my teams, how, how we got out of these hamster wheels, and maybe for every one of you it, it makes like, hey, that's an awesome idea, or that's a bullshit idea, I have a better idea. Now we are in a creative process. <laughs> so, I defined four problem dimensions. You know, problem is a stretch. When you work with the Avengers, there might be some explosions, but <laughs> in general, you save the world. Um, and I define it in, in those four. You have stable processes, you have stable roadmaps, you have stable teams, and stable utilization. And for each of these categories, I want to give you two or three examples um, how, we, how we went on. Um, no, let's do it later. So <laughs> come with me on a journey. Um, think yourself into your, into your office. I know it's, it's conference, it's exciting and, and yeah, but, but come with me to your office and you walk through the office and then you see your team being together in a, in a, in a meeting room. 
the UX designer stands in front of a, of a whiteboard and all the programmers draw something on, on pieces of paper with pencils. And, and you're like, what the fuck is going on in there? And if you're a bit like me, you just open the door, walk in and ask, hey, what are you doing? That's, that's, that, that's interesting. And what they did, they did, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, they did a design studio. Nah, there. They did a design studio. Uh, a, de a design studio is a workshop um, where, you know, it's in, an, in a normal, normal process that you, that you um, experience. It's typically that you have your UX designer and that UX designer creates mockups, that UX designer creates screen designs. Why not flip it around? Why not have the UX designer train the programmers in how to do mockups? First thing, every, every project manager would say, that's a bullshit idea. They are not experts. They, are, they, are, they don't know what to, what to look out for. But what you get out of that is that the next time the, the programmer works on an interface, maybe it's a front-end programmer, full-stack programmer, it doesn't matter, uh, next time they either program or create an interface, they have this bit more of a view of a UX designer. And they say, hey, that doesn't feel right. And instead of doesn't feel right but works, <laughs> commit, they go back to the UX sign and say, hey, I've programmed that, but that doesn't really work out. And this is, this is how you, how you um, get in. Sorry, I, I flipped the, the, um, the order of my, my slides a bit. You should know, I hope all of you knows this, um, this, this diagram. It's Scrum, but what Scrum doesn't tell you is how to do UX. But over time, this UX process gets stable. I haven't seen any team that experiments a lot with their UX process. Maybe over time they, they do something, but on a very, like I said, local, local level. Scrum doesn't tell you how to do your ideation, and Scrum doesn't tell you how to structure your teams. And Scrum also te doesn't tell you who does what. Like, like in my example right now, um, why, why shouldn't a developer want to do a screen design? Especially when you have a workshop with a UX designer. Um, that, that could be a lot of fun for everybody, and it was. And you can take, take that idea and put it on steroids with a design sprint. Um, at Kununu, we recently had a design sprint because we were thinking about launching a mobile app. I don't know if I can say that here, but... but um, <laughs> but we, we, had, we had no idea who, who would use a Kununu mobile app. Um, but with just a design sprint taking one week, getting out of your normal process, out of how you do things normally, do something different, map out your problems, sketch some ideas, decide what to do, and pr do a prototype. We learned so much, and we created way more value than just being in our normal, normal cycle, in our normal process. And my team came back, or at that was a cross-team endeavor, so some people from, from each team were in, the, in, in this design sprint. And they talked to me about it, and they really enjoyed it, they liked it. And um, then I said, hey, what can we learn for our normal sprints? And when I joined Kununu, I, I'm at Kununu since, since the beginning of the year, I saw one of these teams, one of these uh, Avengers teams. You know, they, they, the entire company relies on them. It's one team working for three years on the, on the uh, um, uh, salary data. So I hope all of you know Kununu, right? Raise your hand if you don't know it. <laughs> uh, and I hope all of you have used Kununu to check, you know, some potential employers, your company, and I hope all of you have shared your experiences on Kununu um, and your salary data, because that's what one of my teams works on. Uh, for three years now, we generate a lot of salary data uh, all over the markets, we now try to do some predictive, uh, predictive stuff with, with our data scientists. And um, I had this team that was really in, in, in this Groundhog Day, and I was like, there are so good people in there, there is so much potential, how to tackle that? And what I proposed then, um, instead of, of uh, doing one design sprint after another, let's do something new, let's call it innovation sprint. How about we don't t just say, okay, we can, we can do 45 story points in our next sprint, because we have calculated with that with our, our cool Excel formula. Um, 
but we start our sprint with brainstorming, with just a different questions on ideation, what are awesome new innovative ideas that we can do for our salary data. Just do a brainstorming for two hours, think about fe potential features that we can do. Um, I prepared a workshop, um, we did that, it was pure chaos. So that sprint planning took like three days <laughs> <laughs> until we really had some kind of idea what we want to build, but people enjoyed themselves. People enjoyed the time. Uh, our product owner initially had, was very cautious. Uh, he, wanted to take, uh, he wanted the developers to take more responsibility in that entire um, uh, ideation process and requirements process, but didn't know how to. So he was also very cautious in what if they come up with, with weird ideas that we actually don't want to implement? And I said, come down, you're part of a team, you can steer the discussion then. Um, and what we came up with, I didn't post a screenshot because it's not deployed yet. <laughs> um, but instead of just giving you some statistical view on our data, we create, it looks like a chatbot, but it's not. A chatbot would be <laughs> technically we would be a really stretch. But you have an interface that asks you questions about what you want to know about your salary. Are you preparing for a negotiation? Um, do you think about changing your job? And do you want to see where you can earn more than, than you earn right now? And there is an interface that more tries to understand you instead of just giving you a statistical breakdown over the market. And that was awesome. People enjoyed it. Um, we shared it afterwards. Um, also, we, we were silent in our company because, you know, we have roadmaps and we have plans for the rest of the year, what we want to deliver. Um, <laughs> how does that fit into that? Um, but afterwards, people really liked it. There were two, three other ideas that sparked um, out of this idea. Our brand team said they would really love to do an innovation sprint with our team on the topic of brand design. So what can we deliver in one sprint, also on features of Kununu, in order to, to better communicate our brand and how we want to go on. So these are three ideas, I hope, for, for stable processes that can show you just, just going out of your, or out of your normal, normal way how to do it can, can, can do a lot, lot to your team. One moment, yes, I, and I have you. Um, when you. When you take you know, the standard velocity charge of Jira, that sprint looked shit. <laughs> because we didn't use Jira for the entire sprint. We organized our entire sprint over Miro with brainstorming, putting post-its, reorienting, uh, reor um, reorganizing them, and, and just doing something else. Yes. Who did you have to convince that this is a good idea and to be able to do it? Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have, uh, I, well, we didn't have to convince anybody because um, that was an idea that, a suggestion that I provided in the, in the sprint retrospective. And we have something at Kununu called the cool down sprints. So all few sprints, we just do one sprint without focus on the product and the roadmap, but just to for everyone to cool down, maybe clean something up that you want to always take in some time but that you never got. And we just took one of those cool down sprints um, in order to, to get, that, get that running. And I said, as, as an actual coach of the team, if anybody is against that or, or un hers that we, that we plan to do that and is against it and wants to block it, I take, I take that situation. I take the blame because you know, I'm, I'm the new kid on the block. I can do these things. <laughs> So uh, I already talked about roadmaps. Yeah, this, this is a concern. So stable roadmap, roadmaps. Um, you have a constant flow of, of new features, of new requirements, because it, you know, it just works. You already know your users or, um, quite well. You, you, do some, you do your user research. And, and you have just a constant flow of maybe not high value, but good value, good value features. And um, for me, a roadmap that you do in the beginning of the year is a bit like a New Year's resolution. It, it never works out that way. <laughs> it's, it's, I haven't seen any roadmap that, that was that stable over the year. So the more agile your team is, the more you accept that in the beginning of the year. Um, and when, when, I th when I did that comparison to, to New, Year's New Year's resolution, I thought back to a video that I saw from a YouTuber that I really like. He's called, uh, you see it's very small on the <laughs> bottom left, he's CGP Grey, he does a lot of, I, I wouldn't know what his topic is, but there in, in, in this, he said, 
fuck all those New Year's resolutions, they don't work. Don't give yourself the goal of reading 20 books in the next year. Tell yourself, this will be the year of reading. Give yourself a theme. And whenever you are in a queue, or whenever you are in the toilet, instead of taking out your phone and opening a game, or Facebook, or LinkedIn, open an ebook. Like, just taking these, these small, small nudges that change your behavior over time. And there I said, why not do that with roadmaps? You can still have your normal roadmap with features, but why not do, he also proposed, instead of doing that on a year basis, on an annual basis, do it on a quarterly basis. Why not do a spring cleanup in your project? So for three months in, the spr in spring, you take your, um, um, you add to your roadmap, everyone should invest some time in cleaning up our code base. In whatever you see, you can spend your time, you make the time, <coughs> sorry. And, um, and every time you do that little bit. And after the, the, sp uh, the cleanup spring, you do the summer of personal growth. You do coding dojos, you, do, um, uh, you, 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 have a, you start a book club, only for those three months. And then after those three months, maybe some things will stick. Most likely some things that people will like will stick. And, but then in autumn, you maybe do the autumn of understanding our users. Because we have no idea about the users, nobody has. Um, so why, why not invest? It, does, it doesn't take a complete overhaul over your roadmap. But you know, just a bit of flex time, a little bit of, of, of slack time in that case, can already do a lot, uh, especially on the mindset of people. And when we are about roadmaps, um, who has of you outcome-based roadmaps? Who of you has output-based roadmaps? Like a roadmap with these are the features that we want to deliver. Most of the projects that I've seen. My proposal is do outcome-based roadmaps. So instead of we are going to deliver that new admin interface, we have our um, for, let's say, October and November new admin interface. October and November, we want to improve the life of our support employees. Um, we want to, to make them, <laughs> we want them to use less time for, for, um, for their support tasks. We want them to enjoy their job more because, you know, support is hell <laughs> if you don't have a good team. Um, so instead of putting that new admin interface to your, to your roadmap, put two months of outcomes and then start those outcomes, start this, this initiative with a brainstorming with everyone in the team. Because when you, when you change that, um, that phrasing, um, it generates a lot of creative potential energy. Because people, people will start using that. Um, or people will start thinking differently. They won't think, these are the features we have to deliver, but they think, okay, this is a support um, employee, what do they need? And something that fits very well, first I wanted to do that in, in its own slides. Sorry, I have to make that a bit bigger. Um, but it, it fits very well here. Think about how you structure your backlog. Have an experimentation backlog. Instead, why does everything need to be a user story? Why can't it be a hypothesis? Something we want to find out about our users. Instead of saying, we want to deliver that feature, or the user needs that feature because, um, just put in, we think that this will increase something. And then let's see. And then, then have people orient themselves around these, these uh, experiment, exper uh, <coughs> sorry, about these experiments and these, these uh, hypotheses. I think I'm, I'm quite well in time, right? I have to, have to check it here, yeah. Uh, like I said, I won't take that entire time, so you might also get to see some, some, some other talks. Um, stable teams. Keep your teams as they are because it works. You know, we have awesome, awesomely working teams, and you know, everyone in the agile community tells you you should have stable teams because they are more productive. Yet I have never seen a team that was stable for at least a year. There was either a lever or maternity, paternity leave, a new joiner, an intern. And I don't advocate. Please don't understand me wrong. <laughs> like. Fuck everything <laughs> and, and reorganize, restructure your teams every week um, or don't, don't do, do team structures. 
what I advocate for is creative destruction. And what do I mean with that? Let's say there is this idea, you know, hypothesis driven backlog, um, that there, is, there could be a new database system and you want to check it out because it could help you uh, store your data more easily. How awesome would that be if you have multiple teams, if you take two, three experienced, um, experienced backlog, uh, backend developers, join them into a team for two or three sprints and try that out. And then everyone goes back to their home base. Um, in, I call it, or uh, this is called different ways. Um, I, I take the dyna dynamic reteaming. So it, it's um, from a book of, of uh, Heidi Helfand. And uh, she has here those two traps. The one is the poverty trap. So when you start a new team and that team isn't flying off, it's, it just has a problem of forming and, and growing and, 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 and sticking together. But there's also another trap, this rigidity trap that I talked to you about uh, initially in of my talk, when it, everything feels like it's all, all the same. And there can be some creative destruction. Um, one one uh, other implementation of that dynamic reteaming is, uh, is in the Nexus integration team. I won't go into details of, of the Nexus framework, but you can think of it as one team of your best developers, best front-end, back-end, best QAs, and they provide support for other teams. They can still have their home base. I can still have my developer, Daniel, in his team, but he, he can also join in, in other teams when they need it. I recently had a discussion with Daniel um, when he said, we sometimes, you know, front-end, we need to update our dependencies because otherwise there might be security risks or bugs, and etc. And when he does it, it takes him like two hours. Sometimes it happens that when another team does it where they are not so, so experienced developers, experienced front-end developers, it might take two weeks. And there I said, how awesome would that be if you would join that team for one sprint and instead of doing it for them or waiting for them to do it, you teach them. You show them how to do it, and next time they make it better. Um, when, you, when you take the book, Dynamic Reteaming, there are a lot of ideas. How you, can, how you can restructure your teams, how you can grow your teams. I don't advocate to, to really like, like fuck all your team structure, but why does it need to be that stable how it is? Have it, have it a bit more flexible. There's also some people in the actual community call it fluid teams. I, st I still have one dream, and I've never got to, to, um, <laughs> to convince one manager about it. And instead of having your stable teams, and you have a new idea of your feature for your roadmap, and then you think about what team it best fits, to have just a list of features and the teams organize themselves, and that maybe every half a year, you, get, you give everybody the chance to reorganize themselves about, uh, around uh, new, new challenges. I'm still to, to convince a, uh, a manager to do that, to try that. Stable utilization. So this is my last topic. There are two more, um, two more ideas for you or two more inspirations for you. So this you would work the same way as all the time, uh, the same way all the time because it works. You know, I don't mean here that people, uh, managers give people work, but you know, there are some, you have some experts, you have your front-end engineers, your back-end engineers, and everyone knows who will take what work. You know, sometimes in the sprint planning, you already know that will be that, and this is how it will be done. And, um, but also, when, when you are in your cycle, and you're in a normal sprint cycle, you always, you already know, okay, yeah, uh, that team will have 45 uh, story points, and they have that, that backlog, so, we can do some, some protection and so on. Um, at Kununu, or Corporate New Work, we have Hack Weeks, for example. Uh, twice a year, entire development is on halt. Everyone of the entire company can join. Um, and we can do whatever we want. There, some, some developers said, you know, every online planning poker tool kind of sucks. There are some that are a bit better, but then they have need accounts, or then you have to pay, or then the session times out. So they sat down for one week, 
I think it was four or five developers, and created Kuhn Poker. You can connect that to our own Jira instance. Uh, it's internally hosted. I'm still on, on, on a, uh, I still want to ask people to make, it, to make that public. Um, but they just sat down for a week and now made sprint planning for every team better, because that tool just works. Sometimes we have problems, so <laughs> um, like with every self-developed tool. Um, but that was a lot of fun. Um, in our last hack week, so in November we will have the, hack, the next hack week, and the last one was in, in May. We had uh, some people going together. We do some employee um, uh, surveys every, we uh, every week with Polly. And what they said is they want to do some data science on those feedback messages. No, it's anonymized, but everyone can see it. And they want to feel the sentiment of, of, those, uh, of those messages. And then they want to go with that sentiment into the Spotify API and create a Spotify playlist for every week of the mood of our company. <laughs> that, that's totally random, but people who didn't get the chance to work together so far suddenly got the chance. People who never ever in their life worked with a data scientist and with how a data scientist works, because that's super strange, different from, <laughs> from anything else that I've experienced, uh, but it makes sense for them, um, suddenly get to work with those people. It's a lot of fun, and there can also be a... Be a um, be some, some outcome uh, for the company. The design sprint and the hack week were the two inspirations, for example, for that innovation sprint that I did. Uh, and this is what I want to do with you, uh, or to, to do for you. I don't want to give you a toolbox or a guideline or a framework. I, I want to inspire you. And I, I in the end, I have some time for questions, uh, but also some time for your ideas. Maybe, the, maybe we can also do some, some discussion together, um, how we what, what you did so far. The last thing that I want to share with you is a curated challenge backlog. Um, in my old job at CloudFlight, um, our CTO would have a backlog of challenges for our company. Like, our deployment process takes a lot of manual steps. He would love to get rid of these steps. Everyone, anytime during, uh, during the normal year, can just take some time and work on the challenge. Or there is a new Java application server and he would like to try that out, and he would love to see a test project, a skeleton project internally, um, that we can then build on. And um, this is, like I said, curated by the CTO, and then everyone all the time during, during the normal, normal work can just say, okay, I would, I would try, you should have to check with a team lead, project lead, etc. cetera, um, but they should give you the time, and then you can work on these challenges. Um, and we also did that on a local level, just in the last sprint retrospective. My development team had the idea to have a tech backlog for our team, completely owned by the developers. Uh, the product owner can sure also bring in, uh, bring in his, his points, <coughs> but prioritization, refinement, everything is just done by the developers. And in every sprint planning or during the sprints, any developer can say, hey team and hey product owner, this is a thing that I want to work on. And uh, this is <laughs> what, what we have, that, that uh, tech backlog for, for our team. It's not something to clean up, you know, we, we throw things out of a release and we, cl we clean them up afterwards, but there are some, you know, every, every project has some legacy software, some classes that nobody want to touch, and those are in there. And maybe if you have a good day, <laughs> you want to you take, take a look at that. With this, I hope, I have inspired you. Um, thank you. <laughs>